Good morning. This is November the 15th, Friday, 2024. We are in BBIS first semester compulsory English class, where we finished reading Manjushri Thapa's memoir, Rhymes with Fungi Free, in the previous three or four classes, where we read about different issues like identity crisis, hybrid identity, uh, hybrid cultural upbringing, etc. Now we are moving to another text in our curriculum that is titled as How the Web Destroys the Quality of Students' Research Papers. It's a long title. Let's begin by focusing on the title itself. So I have been telling you that every time you get to read something, whether it's you're taking al exam or, or SAD exam or GRE exam or any KU exam or MBA, whatever, in life, if you get to read something, always ask two questions. One question is, what is this text about? What is it about? Second question you ask is, how is it presented? The what and the how, right? Let's do the same here. So let's ask the question, what is this text about? So to answer this question, one easy way is focus on the title. How the web destroys, so it's about web, the internet. Now we know that this essay is about internet. We haven't read yet, but we can easily guess that this essay is about internet. Now, again move ahead, the same question, what? Then ask a question. What does this essay say about internet then? Because we have a long title, we can find the answer here. Web destroys. That's a negative word. That's a bad word. We don't like that word. Something harmful, undesirable. Okay, ask a question. What does the web destroy? Then the quality. Internet destroys the quality. Okay, ask for the quality of what thing? Then you get students' research papers. So, this, this title, this title makes a claim. This title makes a claim. And I have been telling you that, now let's move to the second question. How? We forget what? Now, how? To answer the how question, first you should ask the question, what is the genre of this text? You can easily guess that this is three, four page article. So this is an essay or article. This text is an essay or article. Second question you ask, what kind of essay is it? If you focus on the word article, normally you will see in academic writing, academic reading, I mean academic courses, articles are almost 100% argumentative. They are argumentative. So now you know that this essay is an argumentative essay. Now once you know that this essay is an argumentative essay, now you have to remember what are the elements of argument. For example, <clears throat> an argumentative essay makes a statement or claim. Then, it brings proof 
to support that claim. Now you know that an argument of ASA makes a claim. Now next question, we should look for the claim now. Because you said an argument of ASA makes a claim. Now look for the claim. Normally in an argumentative essay, if you remember reading Where Do We Stand by Lisa Davies, paragraph 4, sentence number 2, presents the argument as a thesis, if you remember. But here, if you are a clever reader, you focus on the title and you will see the major claim of this essay, the thesis. The thesis of this essay is the web destroys the quality of students' research papers. Circle this. This is the claim. This is the statement. This is the statement or claim. Let me put my phone in silence mode first because it may, I just remembered. Just a minute. Or why silence? Let me put it in flight mode. Okay. Statement. This is statement. Now, next thing you look for is proof. What does proof mean? Proof means reasons to support the claim. Proof means evidences. Proof means facts. Right? That support the statement. So now we have the statement here, the claim. This essay claims that the internet destroys the quality of students' research paper. Fine, we note it down. We note it down, the claim. Now, let's get into the essay. Taking notes while you read. Look, the writer is telling, the book is telling how to read. Never read without taking notes if you are a student. If you are reading for academic purpose, you should note down certain things you read. If you are reading for pleasure, you might not note. Fine. So it says, as you read, note in the margin the hazards. See here. Here is the help. This essay is about the hazards of using the World Wide Web. Sometimes I have mobile phone. My family is there. A minor may be sitting by my side. I'm browsing through the reels. All of a sudden, a nudity appears. I'm adult, I might take it easy. But the minor, if the minor gets exposed to this nudity, this harmful, see the hazard. You, don't, you never know what may appear, right? So hazard means, see the word hazard, danger. Also indicate the points with which you agree and disagree. This is a controversial essay. It was written, this essay was written in 1997. And I saw the Windows logo in Kathmandu Kantipat in 1994 for the first time. Otherwise, I didn't know about this internet, right? So it's 2024. So this essay is 27 years old. In a sense, it is an outdated essay. But the argument that the writer makes is worth considering. Not completely. Uh, uh, they are asking for the attendance sheet. Have you done with attendance?
Okay, now get into the essay. You will see that in the book New Directions, every essay is preceded by a brief introduction to the author and the background to the text. Always read that before you get into the essay because that will help you understand the essay. David Rodenberg is a professor of philosophy at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. He is the editor of scholarly journal Terra Nova. So look this word, a scholarly journal. So this essay probably is coming from a journal, a scholarly journal. That means this text is about an scholarly issue. Nature and culture. Anne has written a, mem a number of books on philosophy and ecology following the following essay, which now see here. As I was reading out of my laptop, I've highlighted. If you have a book, underline or note down. It deals with the educational hazards of the World Wide Web. Now we clearly know what this essay is about. Write the question, what is this about? And write this answer. This essay deals with the educational hazards of the World Wide Web. In that class the other day, I was teaching the essay, School is Bad for Children. And I said, the 15 paragraphs, read them and summarize them and bring to class. Next day I went around the class and what I found out, only two students had actually read the essay and written the summary. Rest of the class, they said, they Googled the summary. Many of them said, four, five people, they used chat GPT to summarize. They said they copied the text and pasted on chat GPT and chat GPT prepared the summary. Some said it's in Google, sir, and we copied. Look. The teacher gives assignment for reading at home and students do not read the resort to Google and copy and paste, right? This won't promote learning. First, mark this time when the article appeared. You must understand this because if an article is too old, you have to think how relevant it is. It may be relevant, it may not be relevant. In the chronicle of, now always mark where the article appeared. Are you aware? I don't know. This chronicle of higher education is a wonderful journal for you to study. Follow. They might charge you some money, I don't know, but they have free articles also. Go to internet this afternoon and search for this journal and subscribe if possible. They publish articles related to education, higher education. A publication for college and university teachers. Now this, look here, this is important. Why? Because this will tell you that this essay was written for teachers and administrators and colleges. This is the audience. Here you know the audience. You have a hint about the audience of this, this text. Who is the audience? College and university teachers and administrators. Following Rothenberg's essay is a letter to the editor. So it was published in this journal. So someone wrote a letter, right? Disagreeing with aspects of this argument. So we read the background. And I told you every time you read the essay, if there is an introductory note, do not miss it. Read it and take notes. That will help you to understand how to move ahead. Now, next thing let me tell you. I've been telling you that every argument an argument always emerges from a context. Every argument, no argument emerges from a vacuum. No argument emerges from the Mars or Saturn or Venus or Moon. Every argument emerges from society, which means there are people who do something, who say something, Look, I told you, I came in the staff room this morning and the teacher was talking about some students. I heard them. I joined the conversation. I came to you and I argued that if my son failed in four subjects, I'll punish him severely. That's my argument. You may disagree. You may say, Divakar said he was a bad parent. I agree. But that's my argument. And this argument emerged from the 
context in the star from this morning, right? Now, now let's let's look at the context of this argument. And normally you will know the context by the title. And if you go to the first paragraph, let's see the first paragraph. Sometimes I look forward to the end of the semester, Russ. Now we know this I is a teacher because he talks about semester students. So we know that this I is a teacher. Okay. When the students' final papers come, so here he talks to students. Now, now we know it's about college. Final papers come streaming into my office and mailbox. Final paper. It's about assignment. It's about assignment. I now. Now we know by the by the first sentence we know the context. What is the context? Context is education. Context is college education. More specific context is semester students. They have been given paper to write. Read ahead. I could have, see the language. See this language. Pay attention to language. Word by word. I could have. I, I could have. I might have. It is talking about probability. This is probability. Chances are. There are chances. There are. I could have hundreds of pages of original thought. Now underline this. He does not say I have. See the language. Rodenberg does not say I have. He says could have. Chances. To read and evaluate. Once in a while. Look this phrase. Pay attention to this phrase. Once in a while means not always. Rarely. Sometimes. Occasionally. Once in a while, it is truly exciting, not always. And brilliant words are typed across a page in response to a question I have asked the class to discuss. By the time you finish first paragraph, you should be very clear about the context. Now the context is the professor had assigned his students to write term paper on certain topic and now students term papers have arrived in his oh who is yawning don't yawn if you are not physically fine stay out take bath take bath in the bathroom here find out I won't allow you to be lazy in my class. My classroom is not a restroom. You do not come to my class to take rest. You come here to be alert, active, attentive and pay attention to what I'm saying. Hold a pen in the hand. Your ears, your eyes should be towards my presentation. I'm explaining something and note down. If I saw you next time yawning like that, I'll run down there, grab you by the arms, drag you and put you out of the door. That's what I will do and I've informed you. Don't complain me if I do that, okay? If you are sick, go to infirmary. If you are unwell, go to hospital. But you can't stay sick in my class, okay? If I'm sick, I'll go to hospital. I won't come to take a class and say, I'm sick and can't teach you, okay? I am sincerely explaining. 
This is presentation part. You have got to listen to and understand. So context, right? A professor had given assignment to his students to write a term paper on certain topic. And now the assignment has come in his mailbox. And he says that sometimes there are brilliant words, original thought. And there is a clear hint that only rarely he gets original thinking. Often he gets bad writing. So first paragraph, context of the issue. The writer describes the situation. What situation? College class, semester class, assignment. That is workplace from where the problem emerges. And I told you, in argumentative essay, mostly argumentative essays are about problems. I repeat, mostly argumentative essays are about problems. Because if there is no problem, you would not argue. If there is no problem, everything is 100% fine. You won't make any argument. Okay. So I said, begin by understanding the situation. Now I move ahead. Go to paragraph 2. But we are reading argument. So what is the language of argument? In argument, you will see that there will be a sentence. One, sentence one. And then there may be a sentence two. And you will see that the two sentences express opposite ideas often. Often in argument. So the language is mostly you will see writers use contrast markers. What are contrast markers? Words like but, though, although, even though, however, etc. For example, you pay attention here and you see the word but. Second paragraph begins with a contrast marker. That means the second paragraph will say something opposite to first paragraph. Do you get my point? The second paragraph will say something opposite to first paragraph. Keep in mind, wherever you read, but this past semester, come down, let me show you together. But here he says, this, this past semester, and here he says, sometimes to the end of semester. Here he talks about general scenario. Generally, this happens. And from general, he is coming to particular. So do you see the movement in writing? I told you in, where do we stand? Writers open essays with a general scenario. In where do we stand? There is general scenario. People are dancing, right? And then they come down to particular scenario. So Rodenberg talks about general scenario of what happens in semester. And then second paragraph, he narrows down. This is wide, broad, now narrow down. Narrow down. How does he narrow down? This past semester, particular. So the movement in this two paragraphs is from general to particular. General to particular. This is the quality of good writing. Okay. But this past semester was different. Now, as readers, we want to know what is different. Because Usually, he, he has original thought, he said. Usually, he, he gets original thinking in writing. It was different. I noticed a disturbing decline in both the quality of the writing and the originality of the thoughts expressed. Now, look, as I was reading at home for preparing your class, I highlighted in my soft copy. Why, why did I highlight? 
because I want to point out clearly that this, this sentence, it expresses the problem. In paragraph 2, the writer expresses the problem. So this essay is about a problem. What problem? A disturbing decline in the quality of writing and the originality of the thoughts expressed two problems. Students' writings do not have good quality. There may be a lot of spelling errors, punctuation issues, grammar issues, irrelevant ideas, poor ideas. So, students' writing is showing poor quality. One problem. Second, the ideas that they are expressing, the thought, they are not original. What, it, what might it mean? The ideas in their essays might have been copied from Google. As I told you about the next class yesterday. I said summarize and they, chat, they use chat GPT. Right? They use Gemini. They use Google services. Right? So two problems. What problem? Quality of writing is very poor. And the ideas are not original right in the second paragraph Rodenberg in the very first sentence presents the problem in a sense now okay whatever you see in red ink here in my soft copy that is commentary that I wrote if you are reading my text on a laptop at home please understand that the text in red is my commentary if you have a printed version understand that whatever is in bracket is not original text. It is Divakar Sas commentary to make you understand. Now, let us write here. We have a problem now. What problem? This problem. In research, nothing begins unless you have a clear problem. If no problem, no research. Understand. In the academy, if no problem, everything is fine, no research. Now ask a question. Where does research begin, Divakar, sir? Simple, plain answer is, the moment you sense a problem, research begins. Because the purpose of research is to solve problems of society and make life better. Why do we need research? Simple answer. We need research to solve problems of our life in society so that we can live a better life. So if you have no problem, you need no research. But here we have a problem. Now ask a question. Devaka saw. Okay, we have a problem. Fine, we have a problem. What do we do next? Next is, next is, See, hypothesize about possible causes of the problem. In the staff room, I heard that a student failed four times in the same subject. Could not score 16 out of 50. Problem. Now what is hypothesis? I said the parents should be responsible. There is one hypothesis. You may say, Divakar sir, you are wrong. Our parents are doing their best to educate us. You are wrong. Okay, I agree. But I began by saying, when I heard the first thing, the, the problem, the first thing in my mind came, if he has failed four times, then we should call the parent. That's a hypothesis. I'm saying the cause of his failure lies in parent. Now, it's not necessary that what I said is correct. It may be correct. It may not be correct. To know if it is correct or not, you have to meet the guardian. Interview them. Find out. Then you can decide. You might say, Divakasa, I found that he has library at home. He may arrange tuition classes also. He gave all the money, so he is not liable for that. 
now my hypothesis is cancelled because research showed that my guess was wrong now what is hypothesis this hypothesis is a wise guess about what is causing the problem a hypothesis is a wise guess when you will reach seventh semester for example the college will ask you to prepare research on a topic then you have to come up with a problem you have to come with a hypothesis now let me show in the text here what is hypothesis look here what had happened since last fall what is this this is a question this is a question in research you have a problem second second you ask questions you ask questions third answer those questions by gathering information answer those questions by gathering information possibly your answer may verify the hypothesis then research is done finished publish it maybe your answer shows that the hypothesis that parents are responsible for this failure is wrong then ask next question so let me again tell you clearly no research begins without a problem if somebody says in your bba program to write a research paper the first thing you do is think about problem whenever anybody says you you have to write a paper research paper thesis dissertation the first thing you should think about is problem second is what questions should i ask about the problem here the problem is the quality of students writing and originality of their thinking is declining problem second step ask a question what had happened since last fall why last fall because last fall if you see in the first paragraph last fall he says he read let me show you what had happened last fall see he he puts a question what had happened since last fall now point here come back come back yes last fall now point here their research papers had original thinking last fall their research papers had truly exciting and brilliant words in them last fall last year the situation was better but this year it has changed now come back to the second paragraph look the process of reading <coughs> so the question problem now question first question what had happened since last fall did i ask worse questions now what is this this is this sentence is called the hypothesis what does hypo mean hypo means imagined or proposed thesis means idea so hypothesis means an idea which i am proposing as a solution to a problem or as a cause to a problem but i have not yet verified if that idea works or does not work i am simply proposing 
Now ask question, Divakar sir, how can you propose any idea without verifying it? My answer is, I'll say, my hunch says. Do you understand this phrase? This English phrase. My hunch says, hunch, H-U-N-C-H, my gut says, my thinking says, my imagination says, my guess says. So hypothesis is what your hunch is saying. What do I mean when I say what your hunch is saying? We human beings are wise animals, right? We have intelligence, right? We have mind. So whenever we face a problem, the first thing is our mind starts thinking about the cause of the problem. And we say, is it because of this? Is it because of that? That imagination, that hunch is called hypothesis. Why we call it hypothesis? Because it is an idea which is being proposed, but it is not solved yet. It is not tested yet. It is not tested yet. So David Rodenberg proposes the idea. What idea? Cut this did and read this and make it past tense. I asked worse questions, hypothesis one. So he imagines maybe my students could not write better research paper this semester because my questions were bad. So he is blaming assignment. He is blaming assignment. He is saying the research quality has gone down because the quality of the assignment has gone down. This is hypothesis, but it is not tested yet. Now look ahead. Second hypothesis, where are my students usually lazy? Now remove this where. And write in capital. Hypothesis two, my students were lazy. Remove this question. Second image, oh, maybe my the quality went down because they're lazy. Then no. Look this. He answers the hypothesis. No, he says, no, my assignment was very good. No, they are not lazy. What is happening? He is testing the hypothesis and rejecting the hypothesis. What is hypothesis? Possible causes of a problem which you propose and which you need to verify through experiment. And his experience is, I know my students, BBS people, I know pretty well them. They are not lazy. And my assignment was also not of low quality. No, my class, now look here. Now remove, now come this sentence, very powerful sentence here. See, underline it. My class had fallen victim to the latest easy way of writing a paper doing their research on the world wide web. Now this sentence, this one, this sentence is the thesis statement. Let's write like this. Let's write like this. Let me help you. Okay, problem. Problem. The quality of students' research paper has badly declined. Problem. Problem. Second. Research question. Why has the quality of students' research papers declined? Research question. Now, I would this is one. Because my assignment was poor. Hypothesis two. Because 
my students are lazy के गर्नु पर्यो बोला छ म्यामले अनि त्यो भएर एकछिन अहिले तुरुन्तै पढ्दा पढ्दै हजुर त्यही खै के काम उनीहरुको पढेपछि निसिन मिल्दैन हुन्छ त्यसपछि ल ल सी आर मीट द प्रभा म्याम आफ्टर क्लास इज ओभर ओके हाइपोथेसिस 1 हाइपोथेसिस 2 लेट्स राइट एच1 लेट्स राइट एच2 Now let's write S three. What is S three? My class had for this one. The students were using World Wide Web to write their papers. Now, among the three hypotheses. What the writer does is, he cancels first hypothesis based on his experience. He cancels second hypothesis based on his experience. He does not cancel the third hypothesis. He changes the third hypothesis into a thesis. Into a thesis. he changes it into a thesis right now this one underline this yes so the thesis of this essay is my class had fallen victim to the latest easy way of writing a paper doing the research on the world wide web or to write it completely like this this is the thesis what is the thesis complete thesis the quality of my students research papers had declined or has declined not had has because they are misusing the world wide web to write the papers this is the thesis now this this sentence which i wrote here this is also the main argument of the essay this sentence is the statement of the essay now rest of the essay it will explain how this is true by bringing reasons evidences facts to support the idea okay can i move ahead read my comment the writer proposes two hypotheses as the cause of the problem the writer cancels the first two hypotheses and comes up with a third and ultimate hypothesis as the cause of the problem now the writer presents his reasons and evidences below let's go down and see in argument just as i stand on two legs two feet every argument stands on two legs what are they one leg is statement the other leg is proof if your argument has no proof you have failed if your argument makes no statement you have failed we have two eyes research has two eyes one eye statement another eye proof you have two ear research has two ear statement proof you have two hands statement proof two legs statement proof say with me statement say the word statement loudly statement. say again statement proof statement proof statement proof hope you won't forget now 
Move ahead. Academic reading is quite tough. We spent almost 50 minutes discussing two paragraphs. Okay? It's not like reading a story. Move ahead. Paragraph 3. So, paragraph 1 presents context. Paragraph 2 narrows down to the problem and presents thesis statement. Paragraph 3. It's easy to spot a research paper that is based primarily on information collected from the web. Now, this highlighted sentence. What is this sentence? This sentence here, this sentence is called as topic sentence of para 3. This sentence. What do we call this sentence? Topic sentence of paragraph 3. What does a topic sentence do? A topic sentence presents a claim. It presents a claim. And this claim in the body paragraph should support the major claim in paragraph 2. So what is the claim here? The claim here is, what is the claim in this topic sentence? The claim is, we can easily find out if a research paper is based on World Wide Web. So, rest of the paragraph should give evidence how we can find out if a research paper is based on internet. Now, move ahead. First, look here. Now, this this sentence first, this presents reason or evidence or evidence. So this sentence presented claim, sentence one, S1. Now next sentence that begins with first. Look, first the bibliography cites no books, just articles. See the first proof. Because on the internet, you normally do not get to read books. On the internet, you normally get only articles. So if a student did not go to library, rather went to Google, then his paper will have only articles in the reference section. He won't have any list of books. Because on the internet, you don't get to read books. Evidence. Look here. It's easy to spot. How you can spot? If a research paper has all the articles in reference, it must be from the internet. Why? Because on the internet, you can easily find articles, but you can't find books easily. Move ahead. First evidence. Just articles are pointers to places in that virtual land. Somewhere off any map. HTTP, www, etc. So first reason to support the evidence in the first sentence, then, see the structure, first, then. Sentence number two begins with first. Sentence number three begins with then. So the structure is first, then. This is called coherence. This is called coherence and unity in writing. We can, the sentence number two and sentence number three are well connected because it presents the first idea. This is the sequence. Connection by sequence. Connection by sequence. First, then, next, then after, finally. Then a strange preponderance of material in the bibliography is curiously out of date. Why? Chances are the website you visited has not been updated for the last five years. So all the information you get is five year old. Old. Second evidence. See how to find out, how to spot. Second evidence. A lot of stuff on the web that is advertised is timely, as timely is actually at least a few years old. One student submitted a research paper last semester in which all of his sources were articles published between September and December 1995. Look. He was writing paper in 1997, the student, and his sources 
were only up to 95. That was probably the time span of the web page on which he found them. So what do you see? Let me again, before I move to next paragraph, this is the claim. Send S1. S1. Claim. S2. First region. To support the claim, S3, second region. To support the claim, S4, an example. to support the idea in sentence 3. So sentence 1, sentence 2, sentence 3, uh, sentence 4, this is S4, sentence 4. There are four sentences, right? Sentence 1 presents claim, sentence 2 presents reason 1, Sentence 3 presents reason 2 and sentence 4 presents an example to support reason 2. What is reason 2? Reason 2 is their resources are outdated. What is the example? Last year one of my students presented like that. Okay, I showed you this is utterly important. You know, many people do not know these things. I showed you very minutely how to read research writing. This essay is an example of a research paper, research article. Now I move ahead. Okay, I'll give a break for five minutes now. It's around eight o'clock. And after the break, I'll continue. You have five minute break, not more than five minutes.